Huh. So, it's evidently since, as a lot of people have been, you know, looking over that the idea of it ending is being kind of established like that was going to be the case with the way that the story was going. But um, Nakaba seemed to kind of like start to pull away from that. But then he still said that it was kind of like ending, but not ending. And it looks like the, uh, you know, the speculation. And I, I think he hinted at it. I have to go back and try and find an interview of Arthur getting a continuation is in fact going to be the case. And when it comes to that, I have many questions of how this will go because this chapter it opened up a lot of potential but then there's i think a lot of really good uh questions behind it because arthur who's now been awakened as this uh you know he's a vessel for chaos you know as they say the king of chaos and just him flexing his power when he's like starting to just have it all wash over him and really kind of surge in his body and Meliodas guys to try and stop him. And we know that last time Arthur ran into Meliodas, that was when he, you know, wielded Excalibur and he was, uh, he was seemingly beating them. And then, you know, obviously the, the demons were like, oh yeah, you know, we were obviously not very se being serious. We were just uh, wanted to see what this sword is capable of. And then, you know, they, they beat him up and they were a threat to Britannia. But at that point, obviously he, he's getting defensive. You know, he wants to stop Meliodas. He doesn't know about the whole situation right now and he doesn't control his power and then you just get this big crazy paneling of like stuff and like like space is distorted you have like areas of the ground just kind of like all mixed match in all directions and i was wondering how this was possible maybe some form of like illusionary power or reality warping and it, while they're kind of questioning it there is just the straight like oh no is, are, are we hallucinating what is this and it's not that. It is a level of reality warp being just a level of twisting the area that he's in. And actually just Loki really liked that big, like, uh, swinging guillotine armed monster with the castle head that we saw. That was actually one of my favorite things about the chapter, just because that design, I think is just really cool and really neat to look at. But it was just very dangerous for him. And for some reason he threw a D20 at Meliodas, I was kind of curious about that. What are you doing th throwing dice at him? Or is it a D20 or is that... Uh, he's pretty sure it's a D20. Is that a D20 or like... A, I don't think it's a D12. Yeah, because one of them goes up with seven. I'm pretty sure it's a D20. Either way, uh, he's just kind of beating up on him. He's much more powerful than everybody. And Merlin has to calm him down to, to, to like tell him not, you know, not to let chaos consume him. And to stay with the plan, uh, the power that he, you know, has flowing in him. And they're like discussing it essentially because I was wondering, oh, is he going to become like an extra arc villain, or you know, is he going to go out of control and be something, something crazy? But near the end of the chapter, he gains control again, and he's talking to them. And Merlin is explaining essentially that chaos, it's both impure and pure. It's of dark and light, and it's essentially this power of like unstable creation that ended up creating the races of the world and seemingly the world itself. And I'm wondering if it's like the planet or like the state of the world or how exactly that works. Maybe, you know, like landmass stuff or is it literally just the planet itself? And it's this chaos energy and to what extent I'm curious Arthur is going to be able to control. Is he just going to be able to grasp it entirely? Is that something he's going to have to learn how to harness? And by the end of it, he's doing like crazy attacks that like across the planet or something something wild but also the chaos power ended up creating the demon king and the uh the supreme deity which again obviously we knew that she was more powerful but it's not just the much as there is some being called the mother of chaos because in the uh the movie no though not canon it describes the mother of chaos and it's hinted that mama hawk is the mother of chaos and there's some comments from the cob about being like she's her power level is immeasurable, which is how, you know, they described the Mother of Chaos. But it looks like more of the power itself, because the power gives, you know, birth to creation. And now that Arthur has this and his powers, you know, been awakened, Chaos is going to, you know, be existent again. And he's going to be the one to control it and lead Britannia into a new world. So there's, there's a lot of questions there. And... The thing is, when you look at, obviously, Meliodas has been the main character of, of Seven Deadly Sins, and 
it, it's weird to shift it to Arthur, but obviously, like, if he gets his own series, this part is going to be a prelude to it. But Arthur is, he's themed, you know, straight Arthur Pendragon, wielder of Excalibur, King of Camelot, the one to unite Britannia. He's a very famous character. And, you know, when you have a character based off of him, he's just one of the ones you've got to respect. you got to give him credit for just, you know, where their name ties to. But now they're, like, talking and, like, trying to get information out of Merlin. And whoever it was that's in the lake, that voice coming out of it says that they're, you know, They'll answer for Merlin, and I guess we're gonna find out some of Merlin's backstory. And then you know this, this he said like a young witch who wandered the land, you know, on a on an adventure in search for chaos. So the the chapter itself, I think, was a pretty fast read. The stuff that really talk about the like the the material, the the content, the just the meat in this chapter, is the question of where is this gonna go. Because if this was a long time ago, or maybe set up to be a villain, I'd be like, okay, yeah, and then we'll see, you know, maybe he'll train certain characters and becoming like Chaos Knights or something. But if he's going to be the main character of, you know, a continuation, assume it's just, I, I don't know, it's just called like uh, King Arthur or something. Uh, whatever Nakaba decides to call this continuation, because I assume he's not going to just call it Seven Deadly Sins if, you know, the Seven Deadly Sins aren't going to be the focus. But... Who will the bad guys be is what I want to know. Because we've already got the demons uh, clan out of the way. We've already got the goddess clan out of the way. Are there going to be other wielders of chaos that are going to show up? Maybe with their own kind of crews to, to, to fight Arthur for this command position, king of chaos? I don't know. Because this is something that's existed. But it was always assumed that if... Uh, if the mother of chaos ever showed up that she would be like the villain not just like oh no that's the name of the power that you have arthur now you know you're potentially going to be the main character it's just kind of a weird concept because you take the end game thing and it's like no the end game thing is a new game thing and then it's like well what is the new game thing gonna like be competing against what is their obstacle i mean there you could easily have more characters show up maybe like Oh, these are beings that were banished to another dimension and they're prisoners in it and now they're let loose because they did say the seal on chaos is unleashed and undone so you could have all of these beings that maybe were you know too powerful to exist too hard to control in the you know the the material world and maybe they're just kind of locked in pocket dimension shackled into some uh like voided out space you know something kind of crazy to, to really uh push their existence but then uh, you gotta think like well if there's going to be the, the point of a continuation, it's going to have to be, a, you know, a, a fairly decently sized series. It doesn't have to be as long as Seven of These Sins, but I expect it to be a good chunk of volumes, um, if not potentially uh, longer than... You, you got, you've got a lot to work with, and I, I think the Kava's best bet is having something like that, maybe other chaos beings, maybe having other beings out there in the world. Like, again, imagine there are other demon kings and supreme goddesses, but just of other lands, and maybe working up to the chaos, it's Arthur fighting all these characters. Like, maybe Arc 1, like the first one, the bad guy is, like, at level of the original Sinner, where it's like, yeah, we've seen characters bigger, but this is where Arthur's tale is kind of starting out, and then you work up to these more chaotic level creatures. It's, it's a really fun speculation right now, but until we get more information... Who knows? I mean, I, I wasn't expecting a chapter to be out. There, there wasn't supposed to be a chapter this week. It's not on anywhere else except for on Crunchyroll. But I'm, to be honest, I'm pretty sure Crunchyroll fucked up on this one because it was explicitly said that this was supposed to be a week off while it was a double week last week. That's why we're not, we didn't see anything for like Heroes or you know anything else. It's just certain ones that uh crunchyroll has licensed that are from uh kondasha so i mean i'm not gonna complain I, I thought it was an interesting chapter i wasn't expecting it i was getting ready for bed and then like well i gotta read this because you know it's eden zero new chapter came out and the new uh seven deadly sins chapter so I, I wanted to go check out and see what was you know what was going on i liked where arthur was left off and i really want to just see what uh what the position is what exactly is going on with uh with the characters and what the story is going to kind of dive into but 
other than that, I, I don't really have a whole lot. Like the first half of the chapter was really just Arthur letting out chaos and just kind of like getting a flex on his power. That's like, how are you gonna have this as the main character's power is like chaos, like this apparent power of like creation and distortion. This is like a final boss power, and yet, you know, you're putting that on the main character, seemingly assuming that he's going to be the main character of his own uh, continuation story, which I, I'm fairly certain is, otherwise what's the point of this? But, we gotta wait a little bit. It probably won't be for a couple more chapters. This does look like the, the plan that uh, apparently Nakaba was going to end. Seven Deadly Sins, I think, with volume 41. So maybe this will fit into there, and then like two or three chapters from now, we'll, we'll get a start. I know he said something about February. Maybe it will be in February we get a continuation, and maybe he'll take a break somewhere in January, a couple weeks, and then we'll get back to whatever the sequel series is over there. Because I like this idea. I like the idea of the authors, you know, when they, when they finish their, you know, their big work, they end up instead of like, oh, well, I'll just start something completely new and, and com not related at all and you know see if it sticks because that is cool it's cool to get new stuff but when you have something that works and is well established i i like the idea more of expanding it not not the idea of like oh i'm gonna milk it forever and you know and just make it kind of lifeless and just a, a a big money absorbing product as long as you're doing good stuff progressing the story and the world the characters then i don't mind this you know like oh yeah we're gonna keep going and, and, and just see how far the Seven Deadly Sins world takes him. And then maybe we'll change it. I know here Mishima now calls his collective viewers the Mishima world. And he set up stuff that to cross and connect the entire multiverse that he's created. So open something like that with Nakaba. I, I doubt we'll get anything related to Kongo Bancho, but everything forward, you know, and then when we see Meliodas and crew show up in Arthur's spinoff, it'll be like, it'll, it'll be way cooler. Because I think... One of the things I, I will just say really quick is Meliodas' power level, I, I thought it was, I always thought it would kind of get a little bit overdone that, you know, he'd show up and he would just curb stomp everybody. It's not like, you know, in One Punch Man with Saitama, that's the point. You know, he's he's almost like a cartoonish character living in a serious superhero world. But I think Meliodas' is overly present, you know, he just trashes everybody he fights. It's really, you know, was what was unfortunate. He should have been, it should have been switched from the start. Arthur was the main character and Meliodas, instead of being the main character, was that kind of like the Chad guy. And so instead of it just being like, oh, he's just gonna wreck these guys. When he shows up, you don't know when he's gonna show up. And then it's like, oh sweet, he's gonna kick somebody's ass. This is gonna be awesome. We're gonna see him flex. I mean, it worked out for what Nakaba had planned. So good for him. You know, obviously he's got a fan base now. I'm very intrigued to see where this goes and what exactly his plans for the future and what his plans are for Arthur. But other than that, like I said, comment below and uh, tell me what your thoughts are about this chapter. I really like this spread just because it was weird. And that, like I said, that monster design was really sick. So where this story goes from here, uh, just patience and we'll find out. And then that, don't please thumbs up the video, but from the like button, subscribe button, and check out my other videos if you enjoy my content. And other than that, preach everyone who's already subscribed. Thank you all for listening. Bye.